In this video, we're going to be looking at the law of signs. The law of signs is easy to remember and is quite easy to use. However, the downside is that it's possible that you have no answer, no solution at times. Sometimes you can have two different answers. So the law of signs does have some downside, downsides to it. We're going to start here with a, a fairly simple example, and we're going to call it an example of AAS. Sorry. Where someone has given us two angles, and instead of the side that's in between the two, another side that's not included. Two angles and a non-included side. In geometry, this would have been called angle, angle, side. So in this diagram, I'm going to give us angle A is 52 degrees. I'm going to say angle B is 48. I'm going to label angle C and side C. And I'm going to say that side A is 9. Side B, we don't know. Side C, we don't know. And I wish I'd drawn this in a different color. So our given information is this angle, this angle, and the, the side that's not included between them. And let me, again, go back and call this side A. If it was this angle, and this angle, and the side in between, um, that would be angle, side, angle. And that's not something that we're going to use the law of signs for. The keynote for the law of signs is that two letters are going to match. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out the, the three proportions that form the law of signs. We use just two items at a time. In the law of sines, side length A divided by the sine of angle A is going to be equal to side B, which is the length, over the sine of angle B, the angle opposite it. And that's going to be equal to side length C, a length, divided by the sine of angle C, the angle opposite. Now the main thing to keep in mind here is that we're going to be using just two of them at a time. So we might have side A and angle A, as we have here. And that's information for one side of the proportion. And we have angle B. And so this would give us enough to find side B. We don't have to worry about C and angle C at the moment. So the fact that it has three parts to it, understand that you're only using two parts at a time. You're looking for with a law of signs, two letters that match. That's what you need to set up really any proportion in using the law of signs. So we're going to go on and kind of work this problem. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say here that, um, again, we're going to say A over the sine of angle A is equal to B, side length B, divided by the sine of angle B. Don't ever just use the angle. It has to be the sine of the angle. We have A is 9, and the sine angle A is 52 degrees. We don't know what B is, so that's our variable. And I really should kind of highlight that. And the sine of 48 degrees. Now, of course, it's a proportion, so if we do our cross products, we have B times the sine of 52 is equal to 9 times the sine of 48 degrees. However, please understand that when I'm working proportions, a lot of times I just consider putting my finger over the variable and saying the variable is going to be equal to, I like kind of skipping a step and I've been using proportions quite a bit. B is going to be equal to 9 times the sine of 48. So the two things that are on the diagonal get multiplied and then we're going to divide by the item that's diagonal to the variable. So here are all my steps for finding this um, value of b, the side length b. I'm just going to put it in my calculator. I've got 9 times the sine of 48 degrees, and I'm divide, then I'm going to divide by the sine of 52, and I should be getting 8.49 as a value. Now that's the side length. And I'm going to just kind of uh, note it here and write it up here and see if this is a reasonable answer. Kind of uh, 
do this in red and look at it. Now the side opposite the 52 degree angle is 9 and the 48 degree angle is less than 52 and this side is less than 9 so this is a reasonable answer. I'm not done yet. I need to find angle C and side C. And so before we go on to the next page, um, I'm going to think I can easily find angle C by subtracting 52 and 48 from 180. Uh, I guess I'll just do that on the next page. Eight degrees. Sorry for that pause. So now I'm going to use my proportion. And I'm going to use the original values that I was given. Um, I know that I now have side B, but I'm not going to use it in my calculation just in case I made a mistake. A, side length A divided by the sine of angle A equals C, which is something that we need to know, over the sine of angle C. And again, we've already done this part of it. 9 over the sine of 52 equals C over the sine of 80 degrees. Now once again, I'm going to kind of cover this up and say I'm going to multiply this times this and divide by this. The two things in the diagonal get multiplied. All my steps are included in one thing now. 9 times the sine of 80 degrees, I'm going to hit enter and divide by the sine of 52 degrees. And again, I'm getting a side length here and I should be getting 11.25 and I might round that to 11.3 is equal to C. Um, I'm going to write that on this diagram and just kind of check it to see if it makes sense. And again, my 80 degrees I should have put there. And everything seems to make sense. The, the largest side is opposite the largest angles, smallest side opposite the smallest angle. And that's really the basis for the law of signs.